If you're confused by the green packaging options available today, this is the series for you. I'm going to break this down to three specific uh, categories or questions that I thought would be helpful. Number one is how does recycling work? How does the recycling process work? Number two is what can be recycled? So what materials can be recycled? And third would be what can you do to those recyclable materials that can make them not recyclable anymore? Welcome to the Cannabis Packaging Show, the world's first cannabis packaging show. You're watching the Green Packaging Series. What do we call it? The Green Cannabis Packaging Series? Am I messing up the name of our series? Sounds like a good name. Sounds like a good name. All right. <laughs> Episode number three of this series, and uh, we're going to get into the part that you guys really want to hear about. The first two episodes, if you haven't watched them already, I recommend you take a look at those before this video. It's going to give you the context. There's a lot that goes into green packaging, eco packaging, sustainable packaging, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot that goes into it. And the purpose of this series is that Contempo Specialty Packaging, we want to bring you clarity as to what the eco options are. So this is Recyclability 101. That's what this video is all about, Recyclability 101. I'm going to break this down to three specific uh, categories or questions that I thought would be helpful. Number one is how does recycling work? How does the recycling process work? Number two is what can be recycled? So what materials can be recycled? And third would be what can you do to those recyclable materials that can make them not recyclable anymore? And I'll get into what I mean by that, but just very quickly, we'll have people saying things to us like, hey, we want to do a vault box. That's one of our child resistant boxes. We want to do a vault box, but we want to put foil stamping on it. Does that impact the recyclability? So we're going to talk about that as well. In terms of recycling process, what I want to think about, think about as a consumer, where there's a term called wish cycling that I think I mentioned in another episode, where basically, we care about the environment, 95, 99% of people. And you take something, you're like, oh, let me throw it in this blue bin and making the world a better place, right? Isn't that kind of like realistically how it goes sometimes? Are you really looking? Do you really understand what's happening in recycling? So I want to talk about that right now. What's actually happening behind the scenes? When you throw something in the recycling bin, what happens is it goes into the stream, into the recycling uh, system, and it's getting crushed or melted or ground or flaked into different materials that then on the other side become products that can be used. So it's not like, you know, it's getting a jar is going in and getting washed and coming out the other side. It's getting smashed, crushed, melted. And then on the other side, it's going to be turned into some kind of useful product. So in certain examples like PET might get recycled into more PET packaging or plastics being turned into um, fabrics or carpets, right? A lot of synthetic carpets or um, you know, the synthetic decks that have become popular that's made out of recycled plastic. So it's taking something that was uh, from the recycling bin going through a system and then being turned into useful product after being processed, ground up, in this case of metal, melted, et cetera, et cetera, which is, I don't know, kind of something that didn't really dawn on me until I studied this um, a little while ago. What were you thinking um, just two I minutes ago? Happened. You were I thinking the magic recycling magic, bin syndrome, yeah. right? So what can be recycled? So at a high level, let's talk about fiber, plastics, metals, and glass. Those are the categories that we're going to cover right now. So fiber, carton board, corrugate, a lot of these products that are in front of us, we'll go into in a moment, can be recycled. They're bored. They would go through a plant. They would then be processed into pulp and then come out the other side and either go into other packaging products, which we'll talk about in the next episode, which is going to be post-consumer recycled products. Plastics, which we all know about, Fast fact that certain plastics can be recycled more than others. So a PE, which is a plastic number four, I believe it's number four, you can fact check me on that, can be recycled about five times versus a PET can be recycled about 10 times before it's no longer useful in the recycling system. Again, those are um, ballpark numbers, but those are what the recycling experts say. Metals, so aluminum gets a very high grade amongst recycling experts because it can be recycled infinitely. So there's no, we're saying like PE and PET, there's a life, a number of times it can be recycled before that matter is no longer usable. Aluminum, infinitely recyclable. 
Other metals, tin, steel, etc., are still good. Not infinitely recyclable, but they don't degrade very quickly. So still have high performance and high value. And then glass is highly recyclable. So glass would get crushed and then reprocessed. And this was actually interesting. Recycled glass is actually easier to process. It melts at a lower rate than virgin glass, which has never gone through the recycling system. So performs almost as good. All right, we put these little caveats in almost as good because then someone could say, it does not perform as good and then, you know. <laughs> we're learning this as well. This is, we're on this journey with you guys. I'm, I'm not coming to you as an expert that's been seasoned in this business for 20 years, right? We are learning this, we're taking the position, we're surveying, we're talking to experts, gathering the data and trying to present it in this video series in a concise manner that's easy to consume for you. I hope we're doing a good job of that. And I think, um, I think we're covering some stuff and at, at the very least, I think you'll pick up a few valuable points. So that's what can be recycled. So you can't just throw anything in the recycle bin. You can't just take this, this is a glass jar with a cork on it. And you can't just kind of throw that in the bin and hope for the best. Can this cork actually be recycled? And we kind of get some mixed data, right? When we just looked that up uh, about the recyclability of cork. Probably not the most recyclable material, maybe reusable, maybe there's a sustainable angle, but I would personally throw this cork in the trash can and put this in the recycle bin and call it a day. You let me know what you would do in the comments below. All right, do you think anyone's gonna comment, Joe, about what they would do? In the, all right, good, maybe, maybe it'll be from you, right? We'll get, we got a few comments right here. So what can be recycled? What makes something non-recyclable? I think this is a very practical question that I wanna answer. Is something still recyclable if you put different embellishments on it? So the rule of thumb that I've gathered from recycling experts is if what you're adding to it is less than 10% of the base material, then you're good to go. So let me give you a practical example. If you take a box that is recyclable and you add foil stamping to the outside and, and you add some things that are traditionally not looked at as recyclable, as long as that's less than 10% of the base material of the overall package, you should be good to go. These recycling systems, if it's plastic, these molding systems that will use the recycled material can handle a certain amount of contamination. Once you get beyond that, those products are really no longer usable and you don't want to recycle them. So those are the three main categories. How does the recycling process work? Now you guys have a better idea of that. What can be recycled? Your fiber, plastics, glass, and metal. And what makes something recyclable or not? Keep in mind that 10% rule. I have a lot more I could go over. Should we, should we hit up a few more recycling 101? Or do you think we've given the audience? I, I don't wanna, I think the last episode, I wanna throw so much at you because there's so much that we're learning and I wanna share with you guys, but I also wanna make it consumable. Should we go a little bit more? Say we go after the products, and then we'll, we'll circle back on the one-on-one. If you're really into it, there we go. Look at, look at this guy. He's going to be a, a regular on the set with this. Uh, all right. Um, so I'm going to put some products um, up front, and we're going to ask the audience, is this recyclable? So we're going to start with the metal tin here. Curveball here is that there's actually uh, some kind of plastic screen on the front here. So if this was a metal tin, I think it would certainly be recyclable. But... Um, we got this metal, excuse me, this plastic front. So what do you think? Is that recyclable or not? Josh is nodding his head no. We're going to, uh, we're going to see what people think, and we'll reveal the answer to that question on the next episode. So um, these are containers made of uh, HDPE, high-density polyethylene, and um, these are definitely recyclable, right? So these are plastic. Um, and plastic gets a bad rap, I think, for a lot of reasons. If everyone recycled their plastic, then it would be a highly sustainable option. The problem is we know people throw it all over the place and it ends up in oceans and, and terrible things happen in trash cans. It's like people don't, but if you really get to the bottom of it and you weigh the pros and cons, a lot of people will say, if humans actually follow the rules, recycling would be a good option for plastic. Plastics would be a viable option. Are those containers child resistant? Yes, they are. Oh, that's awesome. They absolutely are. Joe, what a wonderful question. These are child resistant yes. options. Um, the next one, we got some egg. We got an egg crate, six brown eggs, the country hen. And I know this is recyclable. So it's made from recycled fibers as well, but this is recyclable. Get your omega threes. Don't worry, it's not full. The next one here, this is a, a corrugated board. Excuse me, not corrugated board, just um, regular craft board, 
for a tincture. So this would be recyclable as well. I'll start gunning everything at you. This is a vault box, Contempo signature item, Contempo specialty packaging signature item. And the vault box, whether this is sustainable or not, there are ways to make it, excuse me, recyclable or not. There's ways to make it recyclable or not. So um, that's something where if you talk to us and say we want a recyclable version of the vault box, there's certain embellishments, finishes that we would or wouldn't use, but the vault box can certainly be made recyclable. This is going to be the product of the week. This is our child resistant tin. It's all tin. It's perfect for pre-rolls. It's perfect for mints. It's perfect for a number of products. It comes in a number of different sizes. And the beautiful part about this is it's all tin, making it highly recyclable. And I'll talk about that for a minute. Um, one of the other things about recyclability is anytime you're mixing materials together, you could potentially reduce the recyclability of the product itself. So, an example of a, a barrier bag, which is common in the cannabis industry, and this is not recyclable. And the reason this is not recyclable is because there's many layers to a barrier bag. There's usually three layers, and the layers sometimes vary depending on um, whether you're using more of an aluminum inside or uh, polyethylene inside or a vacuum metalized polyethylene. Many details there, but the bottom line is you're, you're mixing various materials together in a way that the recycling facility cannot easily separate. So for that reason, something like this is not recyclable. Whereas if you take something like our, our child resistant tin, this actually is totally recyclable, no plastic. But if this goes to certain facilities, I think it could be ground up to where the metal and the plastic might get separated. I still think this is the most recyclable option because it is all metal, but there's certain child resistant tins on the market with plastic on the inside. And I wouldn't say they're definitely not recyclable, but anytime you can just keep one material, you're better off in terms of recyclability. So this is just another version of a tin with printing on it. So here's our glass jar from earlier in the episode. We got the cork top. So if we were, we're gonna recycle this part here and we're gonna throw away that side there when we, when we dispose of this product. We can't just be throwing stuff in the recycling bin hoping for the best. So um, I'm hoping this video gets you guys to think about that. And then as we said in the previous video too, how do we educate consumers what to do with this packaging? Because if we make all the best decisions as industry leaders and consumers don't know what to do with it, we're not doing our job. I think we have to take that on as our personal responsibility to educate consumers and not just say, oh, we're doing our part. Where's that mindset gotten us? It's gotten us to a point where we throw recyclable on everything and oceans are getting clogged and you see like a lot of bad stuff happening. So we have to take that responsibility and condemn especially packaging. We're gonna start, right, Joe? We're gonna lead the way. We're the leaders. You ready? We're gonna make you the leader, the face of sustainable packaging. You're gonna be on the next episode. All right. So we got pop top bottles, a polypropylene most pop tops are made out of. and. There's horror stories where you go outside of a dispensary and there's pop tops everywhere. They're just littered on the ground in trash cans. So it's a perfect example of a product that if everyone recycled these, it actually would be sustainable, right? These would go into various products that we've talked about already on this episode, turn into other polypropylene packaging and carpets and garments and all sorts of stuff. But if this gets thrown on the ground, then it's no good. So technically, this is a sustainable option if people actually recycled it. And maybe it's a tip for dispensaries. Put a recycle bin outside your door. Like you know people are gonna probably take this out and potentially use it right away. So put that recycling bin there. And those are the products. Those are just a few products, but I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you guys some context. So let's talk about, so this was interesting. So as materials go through the recycling system, how do they get separated, right? So like all the stuff gets thrown into one recycling bin. How does it separate from metals, from certain plastics, other plastics? So often this is, um, I'm not sure this is every system, but I think uh, most of them work this way. Magnets are used to pull out metals. And then there's water baths where plastics will rise or sink and there's ionized water in ways that they can separate out the plastic so you can pull out the PP pellets from the PET, from the polyethylene, et cetera, et cetera. So water baths and magnets are used in the recycling. And I'm, I'm actually going Friday to the one in Rhode Island, the recycling um, system to kind of, and maybe we'll shoot some video there. Okay, last thing, 
recycling codes. So those little, you know, you ever look at uh, recycling, there's like a little uh, chasing arrows and a number inside of it, right? One through seven or eight, I believe. So that's actually not called a recycling code. It's actually called an SPI code. So not a recycling code, it's an SPI code. And each number correlates to a different plastic. So PET, PP, PVC, those aren't in order, but goes all the way up. So there's some rumors out there that say that starting at one is the most recyclable and going up is less recyclable. It's actually not entirely true. So PET, which is the most recyclable plastic, as I was saying, it can be recycled 10 times, actually happens to be number one, but that's more of a coincidence because PVC, ready for this? PVC is number three and that is not recyclable. Recycling experts would much rather have plastic number five, PP, over plastic number three, PVC. Who would have known? All right, now my notes are gone. I think we've covered most of the topics. If you guys have other questions, drop them in the comments below. As I said, we're learning here alongside you. But what I can say confidently is we're going to find the answers. We're going to provide practical solutions to the sustainable problems that are in front of us all. And we're going to solve this thing. And I hope some brands come on board with us to do this. Thanks for watching the Cannabis Packaging Show. Thanks for watching the Green Cannabis Packaging Series. We'll see you next week. Contempo Specialty Packaging has beautiful CR packaging for every cannabis product. Visit ContempoPackaging.com.